video for you to explore the Desmos graphing tool that I made to illustrate the logistic population model with harvesting. So here you can see the equation that would appear on the right hand side of the state equation for a logistic population model. Here it says f of x, but if this was a state equation, right here it would say x prime. And as we saw before, the logistic model has two main components. It has the exponential growing phase of x prime being equal to rx, and then it has the rate limiting phase of the 1 minus x over k that um, emphasizes how much of the carrying capacity is still there to be able to get um, filled with the population. This extra term minus c is new and what this minus c represents is um, the idea that maybe we also want to harvest from this population. Like maybe this is a pond that we stocked with fish and because it's a fixed um, amount of water in a pond our fish population will grow logistically and if we want to take out a certain amount of the fish um, for each time unit, that would be represented by the harvesting term right here, minus C. So here I've created a slider for each of the three parameters. The first parameter is the growth rate. Second parameter is the carrying capacity. Third parameter is the constant harvesting rate. And I want you to play with these sliders and take a look at how that changes the um, the picture here that we have of x prime versus x. So if you're reading section 3.2 and you go to page 121, you'll see that figures 3.7 and 3.8 um, look very similar to this. And that's because they're also graphing an instance of the logistic equation. And just like you see in those figures on page 121, uh, we know that the fixed point here, where it intersects at the origin at x equals 0, that's an unstable fixed point. And the fixed point over here, wherever it intersects here, which happens to correspond exactly to the value of the carrying capacity, that's a stable fixed point. You see the stable fixed point here is at about 6.3, and that's because I have the carrying capacity set to 6.3. And so when I play with this slider, you can see what happens. When I raise the carrying capacity, the fixed point moves accordingly. When I lower the carrying capacity, the fixed point goes down. So that's how the carrying capacity um, affects the look of this graph. And of course, that is directly defining where the model predicts the population will stabilize at because the carrying capacity K is literally the stable equilibrium for this model. But how does the parameter of the growth rate affect this graph? Is it going to affect the location of the fixed points? So I made that so we could check that out. Actually, as I lower the growth rate and I raise the growth rate, you're going to see that the stable fixed point that occurs here, and even the unstable fixed point that occurs down here, do not change at all. The only thing that changes when you change the growth rate is the parabola's peak goes up and down. And remember that this parabola is graphing the rate of change. And so what happens when you manipulate the growth rate is it changes how quickly or how slowly the population will eventually end up at its stable equilibrium here, which is the carrying capacity. So I know that in the set parameters I have right now, I know my population is going to approach the value of 7.6. But if my growth rate is really small, if I actually looked at the time graph of the state over time, it would take longer for this population to achieve its carrying capacity. And if the growth rate was really high, then that population would reach its carrying capacity faster. So that's what the growth rate does. It doesn't really change the fixed points, the equilibria at all, but it does manipulate how fast um, the state will actually approach that equilibria. Now for the last piece, I added this parameter C. Remember that that's the term right here, minus C, that represents constant harvesting. So what happens if I start to take some fish out of this pond? Maybe I'm talking about the growth rate per year, and or maybe I'm talking about the growth rate per month, and I want to take out about this many fish per month. Um, as I decide to harvest more and more per time unit, you're going to see a drastic change in the location of both the fixed points. 
The interesting thing here is that the stability of these fixed points does not change. And again, referring to figure 3.8 on page 121, you'll note that if we do a stability, a linear stability analysis of these fixed points, the tangent line on the left fixed point is still positive. So that means that's an unstable fixed point. The tangent line here on the right fixed point is negative, and so that remains being the stable fixed point right here, but those fixed points get closer together the more fish I take out of the pond, and um, they get further apart the less fish that I decide to take out of the pond. Now at some point, if I take too many fish out of this pond, there's not going to be any fixed points left. If I took this many fish out of the pond, you see, what would happen is this graph for x prime never intersects the horizontal axis anymore. So there are no more equilibria. And what's going to happen to this type of population? No matter how many fish we start with in this population, you see that the red curve, which is trying to communicate the rate of change is always negatively valued. So the population will always go down and down and down and down. And even though zero is not a fixed point, realistically, once there's zero left, that's kind of the end of the story. Um, so, so being able to analyze this picture as I vertically translate this down facing parabola, parabola up and down allows me to see how many fish I could safely harvest. Now, just um, to be a little more realistic for purposes of ecological modeling, um, there's going to be some fluctuations in the population, right? This is just a theory, and so I should expect there to be some kind of noisy or stochastic fluctuations on top of this. And so even though it looks like right here looks like a safe harvesting amount for me, right? Because I still have that stable fixed point right there. If I start to think about how stochastic fluctuations would make the population bounce up and down by a little bit, you have to really watch out when these two fixed points start to converge. When the unstable and the stable fixed point get too close together, like maybe my C value is like that, and then you see the unstable, stable fixed points are very close together, that's really a danger zone realistically because the population isn't going to be a perfect continuous line. There's going to be random things that happen to those fish in that pond. And so if I think I'm stable here, but there's another unstable fixed point right next to me, any kind of stochastic fluctuation would kick the population over the line and cause the population to go extinct anyway. So you really don't want to harvest that many fish such that the stable and unstable fixed points get too close together. It's a much safer zone to be somewhere like here where you can see that I still have the stable equilibrium point to the right right here. And if I consider stochastic noise, which I'm kind of illustrating by flip-flopping my cursor left and right here, um, that amount of stochastic noise would never really flip my population to be to the left of the unstable fixed point. So that would be a more safe amount to harvest. And that's how you can use um, differential equations to decide how many fish you should eat.